Welcome! I'm so happy to have you here today. I mean, it's amazing you're still in Tokyo. I'm so jealous because you're there. You're in the village right now. I know, yeah. Are you having fun there? I mean, it, as much fun as we can have, but it's not, it's not as strict as we thought it would have been in terms of inside the village. Once we have the mask, it's fine, but I wish you could explore, you know, the city. I know. It's yeah. not like but the ideal Olympic experience, right? Yeah, exactly. I think it's a little different just because we can't do much and like move around freely. But in terms of in the village and the atmosphere, it's still pretty exciting. And just to see everybody from different countries is, is always nice, you know? I know. Can you show us around a little bit? Okay. So... Oh so my god. This is from my view, my my room. So it's over there is like where we go to, to the track and stuff like that. And down here is the village in there. That's the village buildings and stuff. You're so in a not much that you could see, but Oh, know. I can see it. Great. Oh my god, this is so beautiful. I'm so jealous already. <laughs> I know, it is really beautiful. I had a really good view from my room. <laughs> You're so lucky. So, yeah. how was the whole Olympic experience, like, in general? You know, I I enjoyed it. It was different because you aren't competing against, I mean, for the crowd, you know, that's the biggest difference. But in terms of the competition, the competition would always be tough. And, um, you know, the people there, their, their mission is to accomplish a goal. So the vibe was still the same, but you just miss having the interactions with the crowd. I think that's the... Only thing that was really missing, to be honest. How was yeah. the experience of having, you know, like an empty stadium? Just, you know, the people competing and the coaches and the staff and everything. How did you feel competing yeah. that way? Um, for me, I think once you step on the track, right, it, like everything goes blank, really. So I've never... Like the chairs and everything helps you, but once you get on the runway to actually jump, you forget about that. So I kind of just channeled it like practice, really, because I've been like, you know, Daria is my teammate. Yeah. And so our, our uh, practices are kind of like the Olympic final because she's so good and we have other training partners that's good. So I kind of just thought, okay, maybe we don't have the, you know, thousands of people in the stands but we have the same competition and energy that we would have in practice so yeah and it's so bad that daria got injured i was hoping to see her compete yeah. too i mean it's so sad she was training so yeah. hard she was she is one she is actually my greatest uh training partner and when i saw her I got hurt like initially i wanted to run over there and just oh. be like are you okay what's wrong like la la but I know that she wouldn't want me to do that. And so yeah. I had to stay focused on what I had to do. And once once I was finished with my last jump, I went over and asked her if she needed anything and, you know, made sure that she was okay. So it's unfortunate. But, you know, in track and field, anything can happen. So uh, yeah. you qualified for the final. I mean, that's amazing. And you placed 12. How did you feel? I was planning on being on that podium. Um well, let me tell you, I, I, I saw you were jumping 685 or something like that in the in the qualifying yeah. round. And then yeah. you only jumped uh, about 65, I think. Oh, yeah. I know. I know. Like, no. Yeah. And for my season, like, I've jumped seven meters, like, five times this season. So, you know, I started the season off really strong. And then I had, like, a couple injuries, just a little bit of setbacks. Not major injuries, but... Nonetheless, it stopped you from, you know, preparing the way you want to prepare. And I think that kind of, you know, it just threw me off my game a little bit. But honestly, I thought I would have been able to do better in the finals after I saw my last jump in the semifinals. Um, but, you know, like you said, some things just happen in sport and we can't really yeah. control that. Totally. But moving forward, I definitely will do everything that I could do to make sure that that doesn't happen again at World Championships. I know, and the great news is that the, the, the next Olympics are in three years, not four, so it's closer. I know. Yeah, closer, it's closer, yeah. What's your motto or your mindset in sport? In sport? Um, honestly, even 
recently it's been to stand tall regardless of what's going on. Um, and I say that because in my career, I've had moments where I felt like I was in the best shape of my life, but something happened in terms of injuries or stuff like that. But I always found a way to bounce back. And so even at the Olympics, even though I made history for my country, yeah, I still short of my goal. And so I feel like I fell short of that goal, even though I did accomplish that big accomplishment. And my mindset is, how can I get better? How can I continue to motivate, inspire, and be the best athlete that I could be so that once I do step back on this stage um, at World Championships and ultimately uh, Paris Olympics, mm -hmm. I can stand at that podium and show the world that even though we're small, like our country is so small. I know. <laughs> so, that even though we're small and all that stuff, that we could still be on top of that podium and, you know, be that role model for so many girls. Of yeah. course, you know you are an inspiration, but for so many people in the world, how does it feel to, to be a role model for all? I mean, it's a lot of responsibility. Yeah, I mean, it always baffles me that I am a role model because I don't necessarily put that label on myself but when things like this happen and you you make history and you see all this outpour of love from home then you really realize that wow people actually look up to me and so i i carry that with pride because ultimately i want my my journey to inspire others and if it is doing that then i feel like i've done something well you know um, once i leave this sport i want the path that I've paved to show others that they could accomplish that or even more. What did you learn about this pandemic and what do you think you can give to the world about what you learned? Okay, so the pandemic for me, I've had mixed emotions about it just because when it first hit and track and field was taken away from us, like we couldn't train, we couldn't compete. Um, it made me think about, okay, what's outside of track? And for me, I've poured all of me into track. So I didn't have, well, I mean, I graduated from the University of Texas like 10 years ago, um, well, almost 10 years ago. <laughs> um, but in terms of having other stuff outside the track, I didn't necessarily have that. And so once that was taken away, it made me panic a little bit, to be honest, just because it made me think, What do I need to do so that if track is taken away from me, I'm not at, uh, you know, square one. Um, so I had a lot of self-reflection about that. Where do I want to go next? How do I implement certain things um, during my track career so that once I do finish track, I'm not at one. Um, but on the flip side of that, I feel like the pandemic allowed me to really focus on training and my craft because that's the only thing I could control. I couldn't control the anxiety of seeing so many people die and not knowing if there would be a cure or like when everything would be back to normal, you know? And so track was something that I could hold on to and just kind of escape all of the chaos that was going on with the pandemic and just seeing the death. The death was that gave me a lot of anxiety because you don't want your family to get sick. You're worried that if you go outside like something would happen or you would get it and then you don't really respond to it um but my advice to the world would be if we can't control what is happening but we can control how we deal with it and so if it means wearing your mask or getting your vaccine i know a lot of people have their hesitations or their concerns about the vaccine mm -hmm. do your own research don't necessarily look at and take the media because some of that stuff is just there to scare you really totally um yeah just take the the measurements necessary to stay safe and outside of that don't let it cripple you like find ways to um you know be a better version of you what advice would you give to the people Uh, who follow you, who want to be like you in order to achieve their goals or dreams in life? 
Um, my advice would be if you have a dream, you follow it regardless of what anyone outside of you would say. Um, not everyone would understand your journey or your passion for your craft. And if it's something that you're really, really passionate about, you have to keep going even when you hit, um, you know, slumps in the road because the path is not going to be straight. And I am a perfect example of that. It has not been easy. It has not been straight. And even when you think you deserve so much more, sometimes you don't see the fruit of your labor um, when you want it. And that could be discouraging. But if it's something that you really love, then you do it because that's what your heart desires. And you just have to hope and pray that all your hard work, um, you know, manifest into something that you have always dreamed about and if it doesn't then you have to be okay with knowing that you've done all that you can do and you fulfill your own destiny excellent advice yeah. <laughs> so, what's next for you now i mean of course we know paris olympics but in between what's next what's the plan yeah so i mean i'm i don't think my season is finished as yet i'm gonna try to do the diamond leagues Mm -hmm. um, but if that doesn't um, end up happening, we have Commonwealth Games, World Championships next year, and then we have Pan American Games, which I would have to defend my, my title. Um, and then we have, yeah, Paris. So we have a solid three years of competitions. Nice. So my goal is just to find ways to be, hmm, what's the word? <laughs> hmm. Like steel, like you can't penetrate me at this yeah. point, um, <laughs> even myself, like find ways to just be the best version of me. You're amazing in your sport and I would really love you to be the first woman from your country to win a gold in the Olympics. I would yeah. be that would be so amazing. That's the yeah. goal. The best of luck. Thank you so much for this interview. Yes. Awesome. Thank you for having me. Thank you so much. Have a great day. <laughs> Thank you. You too.